Hello and welcome again. This month my video for elttraining.com is all about the language skills related assignment. This is one of the four assignments that you have to do for the CELTA course and I'm hoping that this video will help you to see what you have to do for the assignment and to highlight some of the potential pitfalls. The first thing that I need to say is that although Cambridge specifies certain criteria for the assignment, each centre has the right to organise their own assignment and so the rubrics might be slightly different from centre to centre. So do read your centre's rubric carefully. The things that I'm going to say now will apply generally but there may be some small differences between this and your centre's rubrics. So let's start by asking what this task asks you to do. It's a very real world task. It's the sort of thing that teachers have to do all the time in the classroom and that is to make your own materials. So I think this is a really good assignment. It gives you good practice in what's a very practical task. Making your own materials is harder work than using a course book, of course, but it is very rewarding. You'll have a lot more satisfaction from the materials that you produce for your own learners than you ever will from things that you use from other people. The other big advantage, of course, is that you can tailor the material to your learners. So whilst course books can be really useful, they can never be tailored to your learners exactly, whereas material that you make can be. You're also asked to use authentic materials to do this. Now you might be going, what are authentic materials? Well, that's quite easy, really. Authentic materials are anything that's not designed for language learners. So the things which are real world materials designed for speakers of English. This might be, for example, newspaper articles. It could be magazine articles. It could be menus or brochures. These sort of things are very useful, particularly at lower levels. They can be very helpful. It might be song lyrics. These sort of things are also useful. Video clips. YouTube, of course, is a brilliant resource for this. There's so much listening material on there, much of it in very short chunks. So YouTube's a really excellent resource to uh, utilize for this assignment. But essentially anything which is a text, that's a listening text or a reading text that utilizes authentic materials, i.e. that's not written for language learners, anything is fine. Just a quick what aren't authentic materials so that we're all clear about this. Course books clearly aren't authentic materials, although, you know, some course books, especially at higher levels, will use authentic materials. This isn't what you're being asked to use. Games which are designed for language learners, other resources which are designed for language learners. This is not what you're being asked to use. So for the assignment, it comes in three parts. The first part is that you have to choose your materials. So you have to choose something to use, a reading text or a listening text. The second part then is you have to devise and describe receptive skills tasks. That's reading tasks, listening tasks. And then for the third part, you have to devise and describe productive skills tasks. That's speaking or writing tasks. There isn't a little extra bit here is that you have to show that you've done some background reading for this particular assignment. So that's something else to think about. So let's look at these one by one. Part one, you have to choose your text. Now, clearly you need to consider the group that you're going to be teaching this to. The assignment doesn't require that you teach the material. Usually your centre may require this, um, but usually you'll be asked to devise it for one of the TP groups that you teach on the course. Now, remember that It'll be easier to do this for an upper ink group because they've got more language, but it's also possible to do it for lower level groups, depending on the kind of material that you've got 
and the kind of tasks that you ask them to do. So don't discount lower level using this with lower level groups. The sort of things that you might want to think about when you're choosing your material are the interests of the learners. Now you want to choose something clearly that's going to interest them, that's going to motivate them. So think about you know, possibly their age, the things they're interested in, the reasons why they want to learn English, the sort of things they may have to read in the future. All of these sort of things come under interests. Their level. This clearly is important. As I said, it's easier to do this with higher levels, but it's not impossible with lower levels. You just have to think perhaps a little bit more carefully about it and about the kind of tasks you're going to ask them to do. For example, if you had menus or brochures, it would be perfectly possible to get them to find useful information such as opening times, closing times, prices from those materials, even at lower levels. Another thing to think about is the length of the text. How long is your reading text? If it's three or four pages, it's too long for a shortish lesson even for a longer lesson, really. If it's a listening text, you know, it doesn't want to be 10 minutes worth of listening. So think about the length of time that they're going to be reading or listening. That's important. You also need to think about the learner's needs. What kind of texts are going to be relevant to them? Perhaps what kind of language is useful for them? For example, if you've got a group who are planning to do to, to the IELTS exam and are planning to do academic English, then clearly texts which are more academic will be useful for them. A final thing to think about is the timetable fit. It's a good idea to have things which fit in some way with things that have gone before. You don't really want to think about your lesson just as a one-off lesson. It's part of a bigger whole. So think about the timetable fit. And finally, of course, don't forget to include a copy of the material or a link to the listening if it's a listening on the internet, for example. Part two is describing the receptive tasks that you're going to do. So receptive skills are reading and listening. So you need to think about the kind of tasks that are appropriate for reading or listening. The first thing you need to do is to do some reading about receptive skills and I'll give you some ideas for books later on. And then you need to think about the sub skills that you're going to practice. Now, some of the terms that you might read about are things like a bottom up approach, a top down approach, skimming, scanning, looking at text organisation, looking at genre listening or reading for gist, listening and reading for specific information. These are the kind of things which will come up under sub skills. So these are the things you need to read about. You also need to decide what kind of task type you're going to use for your reading or your listening skill. Now, you've already seen quite a lot of course books, so you know the sort of task types that exist. You know, it's certainly worth looking at some books and thinking about the sort of task types that exist. You might think about short answers. You might think about true or false, closes, gap fills, detecting mistakes, summarising. So all of these kind of things you could use for reading or listening texts. It's important that you're very specific. So it's no good just saying, I'm going to give them some gap fill questions. You need to include the tasks as you would give them to the learners. So if you're going to give them as a worksheet, include that worksheet with your assignment. Part three then is about productive tasks. Now, productive tasks are writing and speaking. So these are the two things that you need to consider. You don't need to consider both. You consider one or the other. That's fine. So again, as with part two, you need to do some reading. You need to find out a bit about productive skills and how to practice them. 
you need to think a bit about the sub-skills. And again, the kind of things that you might hear or you might read about are things like fluency, accuracy, pronunciation with speaking, intonation and connected speech, again, obviously with speaking. Using different genres, register, so formal, informal, this might be in speaking and in writing. Turn-taking skills, clearly that's speaking related. Using discourse markers, that's things to organise text that might be speaking and writing. And text organisation, which will be clearly more about writing paragraphs, for example, topic sentences. Again, discourse markers, those kind of things. So these are the sort of sub-skills that you might think about practising for productive skills. And again, you have to think about what task type you're going to use. Now for speaking, that might be something like a discussion. It could be a discussion on issues arising from the text, or it could be a role play based on the scenario of the text, perhaps. So these are sort of tasks which you are examples of things you could use for speaking. For writing, you could use the article. If it's a written text, you could use the article as a model for them to write something similar. You could get them to respond in writing to a written or a spoken text. There are lots of possibilities here for getting people to practice their productive skills. Again, with this, be specific. So it's no good just saying, we'll have a, we'll have a little chat about the, the uh, article you need to include the tasks again as you would give them to the learners. Think about the questions that you'd ask or um, the instructions that you would give them. Perhaps if there's a worksheet, include that. Something to think about is that it's a really great idea to use a text in a class for either grammar work or for vocabulary work. This is really useful. I would definitely recommend this. But it's not what's asked for in this assignment. You don't have to use this as a context for grammar and vocabulary. You're just asked to use it as a context for receptive skills work and for productive skills work. But don't think it's a bad thing because it isn't. It's a very good thing, just not for this assignment. So moving on to background reading, as I say, you do have to show that you've done some background reading for this task. Now, the two books that you'll almost certainly have come across are Harmer and Scrivener. And these are both very useful books, I think, but they're not the only books. So, you know, let's have a look at a few of the possibilities too. Other general course books are the Penny Err book, English language teaching is very, very good. And the Tricia Hedge book as well is very good. So those are both general books, similar to Scriver and Harmer, and they're both very helpful and they've got good sections on skills work. There are then also books which are specifically based on, around skills work. For example, these two on reading skills. So those might be very useful to look at. And then there's also the Oxford resource book series, which has got some very useful titles in. There's some examples for you there about skills work as well. So these are the sort of things that you might be looking at to help you. Just a quick note on the sort of things that people often get wrong, common reasons that they might you might be asked to resubmit your assignment. One of the big ones is that the text isn't appropriate. So you need to be careful about choosing your text. You want to make sure that it's not too difficult for the learners or too easy. So it's got to be at an appropriate level. You also need to make sure then that it's not too long. I think it's more likely to be too long than too short, but you do need to look carefully and find something which is of a reasonable length. And then also make sure that the content is going to appeal to your target audience, to your particular learners. So be aware of that. It needs to be interesting and it needs to be relevant to them. 
Sometimes people design tasks for grammar or vocabulary practice. As I said, this is not a bad thing to do, but it's not what's asked for in this task. So make sure that you've got receptive and productive skills tasks. Sometimes people don't include the specific tasks. It's not enough just to say, I'll do a gap fill. You do need to show exactly what you're going to do with the learners. And sometimes people don't give enough reference to background reading. You do have to show reference to at least a couple of texts. So make sure that you show that you have read something. So all that's left to say really is the best of luck. I hope it goes very well. If you've got questions, your tutor is the best person to ask. I hope that was helpful and uh, I'll see you next month. Thanks very much. Bye bye.